suddenly the content creation has become extremely extremely simple and extremely extremely easy and i see a lot of people cropping up and speaking about ai are you witnessing the same give me a quick yes on chat box you know so my idea behind today's session is to actually simplify ai for you and actually help you understand and demystify this journey of what ai is all about how can you basically make a mark in this industry and most importantly what can you do to upskill yourself and actually be in this ai world but i would want all of you to be super duper participative because the more you participate with me the more questions you ask from me the better actually it will be and the more use case i can actually show you in today's session right so in case you're super excited give me a quick side on the chat box and then that, that that can really help me to uh, give you more and more more and more and actually help you to <coughs> demystify this ai space a little bit more so some ground rules of our workshops okay is that first things first you know i would want all of you that this is going to be a hands on live session so i would encourage all of you to participate the more you guys participate the more you guys you know participate and do it live the better actually it will be number 2 you take notes the more notes you take the more thing that you write down the more you will remember because usually after the workshop people get super excited but then after one day two day three days you'll forget whatever i shared with you so it's better that you take notes and you keep practicing and number 3 in every regular interval i'll probably open up and probably i'll ask you to ask me questions because the more questions you ask me the better it will be and the more i can deliver to you and the more i can actually give you back right so that exactly is you know the idea so let me first of all begin by saying thank you to all of you you know because it's really really amazing that all of you are spending this thursday evening time with me over here taking out two hours of busy schedule and being over here so really thanks a lot for giving me your time because today time is the most important commodity that we all have right now and it's really a pleasure to you know have all of you and also thanks to the entire ed force team to organize an ed talk and got get all of you lovely people out here so let me let me start by telling you that what is happening in this space you know interestingly we are the only generation at this point in time who have seen life before the internet and after the internet you see today's time it's become so simple i mean imagine that you know our sons and daughters or the next generation right now will not be able to see that how people write stuff you know on a notepad okay how people basically used to ideate by drawing things maybe you know on a piece of paper because our generation the generation going forward will have everything to be extremely extremely easy you know people today are will be are, are making videos they are making voice overs they are making texts without having to have any creative thinking process at the end of the day so today's time you see babies are born with internet number 1 number 2 today machines are learning and human beings are hooked on their cell phones so what do i mean by this Now, what do I mean by when I say machine the learning? Let me help you understand this. You know, with a very interesting live demo at this point in time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just head over to my Chat GPT. All right, and let me probably ask. Let me probably ask it to give me. You know, give me a small note on future of AI. Okay, I'm just going to like give a very simple prompt, and you know, it's going to basically give me you know some some like very interesting article right now. now while we all know that ai can write stuff and i'm going to talk more about chat gpt that how it can make your writing better interesting etc 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 but today ai can also generate extremely interesting human like voice overs it can speak and ai can not only speak ai can also speak in multiple languages okay let me show you something very interesting so i'm going to head over to one of these tools called clipchamp it's a very interesting tool once i come to clipchamp i will i'm going to ask it to create me a new video okay and i'm going to use a feature called text to speech now let me show you something like you know you must have heard a lot of ai speaking but actually you know ai today can speak almost almost like like a human being okay let me show you how 
So today AI is capable of speaking in multiple languages. Let me for now choose English UK. I can choose that I want a male voiceover or a female voiceover. What do I actually need from it? Right. I can also choose what's going to be a voice style. I want a general, I want a cheerful, I want a sad. And also what's my speed and what's my pitch. Now, I want to listen to this very, very carefully. Once you listen to this, if you found this to be wow, give me a quick wow on chat box. Okay. Are you guys ready? Mission sure to you. The future of AI is brimming with promise and transformative potential. As technology continues to advance, here are some key trends and considerations that shape the future of AI. AI will become increasingly integrated into everyday life. From autonomous vehicles to smart homes and virtual personal assistants, AI-driven technologies will enhance convenience and efficiency. AI will revolutionize healthcare, aiding in diagnosis, drug discovery, and personalized treatment plans. It will also enable remote monitoring and telemedicine, improving healthcare. How many guys are like, wow, like, this is actually like a human voiceover. It doesn't even look like AI speaking in it. Now, you know, AI can actually speak like, you know, like, like yes, obviously, you can identify it. It's still evolving, but this all happened in the last six months, mind you. Now, while AI can speak in English, US language, can I ask AI to start speaking the Indian accent? Now, you see many AI tools, they speak in a lot of English accent. But now, AI can also speak in the Indian accent. Let me show you how AI can speak in the Indian accent right now. The future of AI is brimming with promise and transformative potential. As technology continues to advance, here are some key trends and considerations that shape the future of AI. AI will become increasingly integrated into everyday life. From autonomous vehicles to smart homes and virtual personal assistants, AI-driven technologies will enhance convenience and efficiency. AI will revolutionize healthcare, aiding in diagnosis, drug discovery, and personalized treatment plans. It will also enable remote monitoring and telemedicine, improving healthcare. Now, this is just we, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not even started yet. Okay, so this can, those can be English Hindi accent. I mean, English Indian accent. What if I tell you that AI can also speak basically, you know, um, in, 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 what, in what we call is, you know, Hindi, Kannada, Tamil, Telugu, whatever language you want. Okay, so tell me one regional language you want AI to speak. Any regional language of your choice. Okay. I don't understand anything apart from Hindi though. All right. Uh, but then, like, you know, whichever I get maximum, I'm going to pick up that language right now. Okay. So, let's see. I know, I'm going to not request some Tamil, Telugu, and Kannada. Okay. So, so let, let's, just, let's just probably pick up, you know. Um, let me let me just probably pick up Telugu. Okay. Because there's a lot of Telugu people out here. Okay. Let me first see Telugu is available or not. Okay. Um... So, yeah, so there's Telugu. Okay, now I'm going to simply go to Google Translate. Okay, I'm going to simply make it now into Telugu. Now the uh, dialogue will be a concern, but then that can be fixed by looking at translator, obviously. Let's see if you can really speak good Telugu or not. And so Telugu guys over here, tell me if you guys can listen to it, understand it properly or not, okay? Because you know, I can't just Telugu very well, I'm not a Telugu guy. But maybe you guys are, you guys can do that. Let's look at this one. AI Yoka Bhavishatu Vadanam, Mariu Parivartana Sambhavyatato Nindi Undi. Sanke Tikata Purogamistunandana, AI Yoka Bhavishatunu Rupundinche, Kunikilaka Pokadalu, Mariu Parigananalu Ikada Unai, AI Rosuari Jivitalo Yekuga Kalisipotundi. Swayam Pratipatta Vahanala Nundi, Smart Home Lu, Mariu Virtual Personal Assistant Lavaraku, Adharita Sanketi Katalu, Saulabhim, Mariu Samar Dhani Mirgu Parastai. AI Arogya Samrakshana, Roga Nirdharana, Aushada Avishkarana, Mariu Vektigati Karinchana, Chikitsa Pranarikalalo, Sahayam Chestundi. Idi Remote Monitoring, Mariu Telemedicine, Arogya Samrakshana, Mirgu Parastundi.
How many guys over here actually like found this to be amazing? Just give me an amazing on chat box, right? I mean, it's totally mind blown for this, right? So today, if you see, AI is really going leaps and bounds. And it's all happened. And see, now I'm, I'm saying it's still work in progress. I'm not saying it's perfect yet. But this is what AI can actually do. You know, AI can simply, I mean, if, you know, in the last six months this happened, imagine last next one year what's going to happen, right? Now, let me just do Kannada because I think a lot of you are seeing Kannada also. Okay, I'm just, just last language Kannada and then we'll basically move forward with our presentation. Let me just show you Kannada over here and let's see what happens in the Kannada language. Okay. I'm just going to come back on top, put Kannada, Kannada. Aina Bavishu Paravase Matu Parivartaka Samar Tedinda Tumbide. Tantragnana Wu Mundu Varedante Aya Bavishavanu Rupisua Kelu Pramuk Pravutigalu Matu Parigalanegalu Ilive. A Dainandina Jivanadali Hitchu Samyojanigalu Tade. Swayata Vahanagalinda Hididu Smart Managalu Matu Virtual Personal Assistant Kalavarege A Chalita Tantragnana Galu Anukulate Matu Dakshate Nu Hitchisutave. A. Aroge Rakshane, Roga Nirnea, Aushita, Anveshane, Matu, Vayaktika Gurisida, Chikitsa Yojanegalali, Sahai Madhuta De. Idu, Remote Monitoring, Matu, Telemedicine, Anu, Sakriya Gurisuta De. Aro Givanu, Sudhari Suta De. Okay, I, I don't understand a word what she said. Okay, but I think, you know, I think she did just fine. Okay, when last, we were saying Hindi, Hindi Divas, okay, because Hindi, Hindi, I can understand Hindi very well. I'll just show you one last thing, then we'll move forward. Then you can actually try it out at your end. You guys can try Punjabi and all that. So it has all languages, because Nepali is also apparently, right? So, 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 you know, you can just simply try it out. Okay. I'm just going to last, last thing, then we'll move forward. Because you have a lot to cover. Maybe we've only got two hours so far. Let me show you now. Hindi. AI ka bhavishya sambhavnao aur parivartan kari sambhavnao se bharpoor hai. जैसे जैसे प्रौद्योगिकी आगे बढ़ रही है यहां कुछ प्रमुख रुझान और विचार दिए गए हैं जो एआई के भविष्य को आकार देते हैं एआई तेजी से रोजमर्रा की जिंदगी में एकीकृत हो जाएगा स्वायत्त वाहनों से लेकर स्मार्ट होम और वर्चुअल पर्सनल असिस्टेंट तक एआई संचालित प्रौद्योगिकियां सुविधा और दक्षता को बढ़ाएंगी AI स्वास्थ्य देखभाल में क्रांतिकारी बदलाव लाएगा निदान दवा खोज और व्यक्तिगत उपचार योजनाओं में सहायता करेगा ओके वेरी कूल एवरीबॉडी सो दिस जस्ट टू शो यू एग्जैक्टली यू नो हाउ एआई इज चेंजिंग द इंडस्ट्री राइट नाउ एंड व्हाट्स हैपनिंग सो टुडे इफ यू सी देयर आर मल्टीपल एआई टूल्स इन फैक्ट टू स्पीक ऑफ इट देयर थाउजेंड्स ऑफ देम ओके एंड लाइक इट्स ग्रोइंग एवरी सिंगल डे इन फैक्ट इट्स बिकम इट्स सच अ स्टेज यू नो that we basically are you know living in a state where it may be difficult to catch up with these ai tools as well but you know i keep on exploring these tools every now and then and actually it really amazes me in which what basically ai can do at this point in time okay and, and what is actually happening as of now you see what has changed today people in 2000 they used to go to a place they used to just see something but in 2023 they're creating a lot of data A lot of data is created. They're clicking pictures, writing posts, writing content, and all these data together has been put into the AI models, and they've been learning from us. They've been training from us, and now they reach a stage of maturity where they can actually do most of our tasks. They can write, they can speak, create videos, create images. Okay, and it can really do a lot of things. By the way, whatever websites I'm showing you today, session are absolutely free. I'm only showing you free websites. You know, in case if I, in case if I, if I'm going to show you paid tools, I'm going to show it's a paid tool. So yes, so 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 so, so, so there are many tools like this, Prakash. You know, which actually you have to replicate your voice. There's a tool called Eleven Labs which can do that. There's a tool called RVC which can do that. Okay, but they all are freemium. They're half free, half paid. Which means for free versions, you can actually try them for some time, but then you can actually upload your own recordings and you can do that. So replicating your own voice as well. Right, but if you see, this entire thing, the world is changing. The world is changing the way we are doing marketing, the way we are branding ourselves, the way we are doing our work. But the question is that are we changing with the world? So if you have to divide the world into two parts, it's no longer about AD or BC anymore. It's about life before AI and life after AI. So just to give you a perspective, if you relate to all of these things, give me a quick I do on the chat box. For example, earlier we used to watch TV as one big family. But today we all are doing personalized viewing. We are viewing content in our own will. We are mostly content consuming content on YouTube and Netflix. 
right? You see, earlier, we used to wait for one week for the episodes to come. Our attention span was very, very good. But today, if you see, we want to binge watch an entire season in one single night. We become more inquisitive. We want to complete everything in one single night. Earlier, we used to remember people's phone number. Today, we don't even remember our own phone numbers. The way we speak have changed. The way we read books have changed. The way we listen to songs have changed. Our travel, our banking, education, and even the way we are doing work today is changing drastically. Do you agree with me? Give me a quick I do on the chat box. Do you agree with me so far? Right? So we think that's changing drastically as we speak right now. Now, I keep on getting this question a lot when I do these workshops. In the last six months, I must have done at least 70 plus corporate trainings. When I'm empowering companies, I'm empowering corporates, helping them to understand how AI is really working for them. Right. So the question to ask is AI is AI here us to revolutionize or to disrupt us? That's the real question you should ask yourself. Now, a lot of people fear AI. A lot of people are fearing their jobs. There are going to be a lot of job cuts also happening. But if you really ask me, you know, your job will be not, it will not be taken by AI. Your job will actually be taken, you know, um, by people who actually know AI better than you. So you'll not be replaced by AI. You'll be replaced by people who actually, you know, know AI better than you. Which is why there's a need to upskill. There's a need to actually, you know, be there and upskill yourself and, and be upgrade with technology. So you can save number of hours. You can actually save time and you can do your work with a better efficiency, okay, as compared to before. So in, today, in today's workshop, I'm going to touch upon and I'm going to basically tell you exactly that, you know, if you have to use AI, what is the right way of using AI? How do you use it for yourself? How do you increase, how do you increase productivity with you? Right? That's my aim. And that's what is going to be the agenda for this, this session today. Right? Pretty cool, everybody. So far, so good. Give me a quick cool on chat box in case you're, in case you're with me so far. Okay? Okay. So first, let's understand a little bit of basics about AI. Like, you know, how AI is, what AI does. So, so basically, there are three branches, you know, in the entire industry today. One is called AI, which is artificial intelligence. Second is called NLP, which is called natural language processing. And third is called LLMs. They're also known as large language models. Now, just to give you an example, what is AI? AI is an AI is a mother, you know. So all your robotics, automation, computer vision. For example, your mobile phone is the biggest AI weapon today, right? Uh, for instance, when you get an email, that email, if it's spam, goes to spam automatically. You know, if it basically, if it's relevant, goes to your inbox automatically. So Google's, you know, AI is, is reading emails for you and figuring out whether this is useful, not useful for you. Right. Today there are robotic surgeries, laser surgeries, even airlines. When you when you fly a plane, the plane has an autopilot mode. That's an AI, right? It's understanding, it's understanding calculations, and ultimately plane is flying on its own. Right. Then one more branch of AI is called NLP, which is called natural language processing. What is it? So you know you all your Google series of the world, Google Translate are used right now, you know, all your chatbots uh, of the world, which actually are, you know, reading content. And they're able to convert content. They're able to either translate in some other language. They're able to write something around it. Okay, they're able to speak something around it. What we just saw, text to speech is NLP, natural language processing, wherein they are understanding the language that we speak and then replicate the same language like us. And the third one is what we call as LLMs, which are known as large language models. Can someone tell me what does an LLM do actually and how LLM really works? Anybody in the chat box can probably tell me what, like, you know, how, how does LLM work? So, as the name suggests, what is a large language model? Imagine this, like suppose, like, you know, how a human brain is. When we have to learn something, what do we do? We keep on reading something. We keep on seeing YouTube videos. We actually keep on, like, you know, somebody tells us, somebody teaches us something. And we assemble that knowledge. The brain assembles that entire knowledge. And then we try to replicate it. We try to write it better than that. We apply our mind to it. We actually try to learn that particular art. Like, you know, when you're learning a new language, Right. You are reading about it. Sometimes your brain is consciously, you know, um, processing all the information out there. Correct? So, just if you see how, how a baby's brain is, when, when it's a small baby, do we teach babies how to speak? Not really, you know. Uh, they basically keep on 
you know, really seeing the environment, keep on listening to the environment, and basically that they one day they start speaking automatically. So, what would LLMs do? They have to keep on feeding them data. So, Chat GPT, for instance, has been trained on all Google Scholar, all the books, Wikipedia articles, and internet. It has almost scraped the entire data okay from the internet until the year two thousand twenty one. And because it has all the data until that particular year, it's read every single book, every single thing. It's able to give you answers based on that. Right? Yeah, we also call it what we call this deep learning. Okay. So typically, that's a LLM. That's a large language model. But there's a problem with Chat GPT. A Chat GPT cannot read the internet. It cannot un un you know answer latest questions. For example, if you ask them what happened in the last week's India Pakistan match, it can't do that for you, unfortunately. But, but. In this case, a Google Bard and a Bing can do that. Why? Because they can read the internet. They got access to the internet. They actually understand, you know, how things really work. Yes, you can plugging. You can do that. Okay. Even Chat GPT four, by the way, can't access the internet. If there's a third party plugin outside it, they enabled it for some time, but then it, but then they disabled it after that. Okay. So that's basically your, you know, GPT. Now just to, just to just to give you a perspective, can someone quickly tell me what is the full form of GPT? What is the form of GPT? Okay, it's called generative pre-trained transformer. Okay, that's the full form of GPT. So, what is generative AI? Generative AI is something which can generate stuff. It can generate images. It can generate text. It can generate voice. It can generate codes. Right? It can simply generate a lot of stuff. Now, just to give you some some more technical gyan because a lot of people are developers out here. Correct. Chat GPT, you know, now suppose if a suppose if suppose some baby makes a mistake. Let's take a baby made a mistake in pronunciation something. How do you correct a baby? How do you normally correct a baby? By telling him or her, saying that you don't pronounce cat as cat, it's cat, right? This is called reinforcement learning. So what do you do? You reinforce the person and tell him the correct method. So Chat GPT. Has a human intervention layer. There are humans who are actually reading your chats, who are understanding what you're typing. And if Chat GPT gives the wrong answer, they are correcting Chat GPT by giving them a real answer, the right answer, and they are training the model again and again. This is called reinforcement learning by human intervention. It's also called as R L R L H I. Okay. Then there's also one more software called Claude Two, which is a close competition to Chat GPT. You know, it is basically only in the US right now. In India, you can use it by using a VPN, and They use something called as reinforcement learning by AI. Okay, so technically, you know, uh, the AI basically uh, reads and assembles data on regular basis, and then basically AI is doing intelligence to correct itself. That's called reinforcement learning by simulated AI technology, right? So that's how these two technologies really work. So every technology is being trained in a different way, which is why the model of the the model of response, the way they answer, is also be different in different different softwares, right? So, Sharad and Jajub doesn't support images, videos. Well, yeah, well, basically, you know, Sharad, uh, it depends. So, Chat GPT is made by a company called Open AI. Open AI has two tools, Dali and Chat GPT. Dali support images, okay, and Chat GPT basically supports text. So, technically, you can combine the two and can give you something. And the Chat GPT paid version, the plugin version, can do everything. It can make images, it can make videos, it can do everything for you using a third-party tool called plugins. I'll just show that to you sometime from now on how does it really work, okay? But just just to give you some. Some perspective on Chat GPT. So you see, Chat GPT was launched in December two thousand twenty-two. It's one of the rocket fast tools. It's fastest growing tool, and a lot of people are using it right now. Okay. Most importantly, you see, um, just to give you a perspective, how cool this tool is. In about two months, it's got about hundred million users who joined this tool and are using this tool right now. It took TikTok and Instagram close to thirty months to get the same amount of users. Right. So what can Chat GPT do? It can write sales script. It can build personal brand. It can build business plans. It can do any specific writing task for you. In fact, wherever writing is involved, it can probably do everything for you. Okay, and trust me when I say this, everybody thinks they know Chat GPT, but very few people actually use Chat GPT effectively, right? And today I'm going to show you how do we do it. But before I start, before I tell you more about it, I want to understand currently from all of you. That how have you been using Chat GPT? If you can simply put in the chat box for me, you know that how have you been using Chat GPT? That will be great. So then I can actually accordingly, like, you know, figure out things. Okay, to write blog articles, summarizing research papers, amazing. 
not much legacy code conversions okay mail resume articles okay to write emails okay appraisals okay linkedin post research articles okay fantastic so all of you all of you have been using chat gpt like you know for quite some time and for different different perspective okay amazing amazing okay so you know just to give you a perspective chat gpt can be useful for any department it can be for marketing sales hr finance etc 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 okay and you know i can just tell you just give you some little perspective if it was in marketing department it can be using making ads doing seo research using scm ad copy if you're in sales it can actually make you emails cold calling scripts you know it can be for objection handling if you're in hr it can be using for recruitment hiring job descriptions faqs in finance you can use for excel macros you know financial analysis of statements if you're in operations you can basically use it for vendor management email communication process guidelines sops so in customer service you can you can use it for making inbound outbound scripts email responses objection handling complaint handling to so this are and this is not just limited to in all of these things are done in free version okay yeah i'm i'm not talking I'm talking about the paid version yet in paid version you can do much much more than that but this is a very exhaustive list that put together that how how different different departments can use it and what is the use case around it so now let me just show you practically how will we use it and what will we do so i'm going to show you and i'm going to introduce you to a concept known as prompt engineering now don't get worried about this term because this term is like very widely used lot of people use it abusingly like we do prompt engineering prompt engineering but then what is prompt engineering right so prompt engineering you know when you work with ai tools treat them like a fresher employee they just fresh out of college they do not know what they want they have no idea what they want to do they are super smart but they need a guidance ai is nothing without your instructions you know if you if you're in the accounting world you must have heard about this concept called uh, fifo it's called first in first out in the in the ai world i know i normally like you know talk about what we call is gjo i normally call is junk in junk out if you're going to give it a junk response you know you're going to basically get the junk output but if you're going to give it a right response you get the right output and i'm going to teach you today that how can you use ai in a very very different way and how can you actually use it for yourself and make things better how many guys over here like to learn that give me a i do on the chat box right how you how, how many guys want to actually do that correct so that's what we're going to focus upon but see for any ai to work you need to have subject matter knowledge which means that you need to have knowledge about a topic you need to know how to prompt it and you need to know how to reason it you need to know these three things for example if you're a developer and if you do not know how to code and you're going to ask chat to write code for you And if you can't analyze that code, that code is junk for you because you then you can't improve that code. Unfortunately, right? So you know you need to have the knowledge of your subject matter expertise, and nobody can take that away from you. AI cannot think for itself. A human has to think for the AI, and that is the main aim over here, right? So essentially, there are three types of prompting. Okay, there are three types of prompting, and you, and you want to make you want to probably take notes this time. is going to be very very important for you the first type of prompting is what we basically call as zero shot prompting what is zero shot prompting zero shot prompting basically simply means that you know where i simply um giving instruction to chat gpt like what everybody does suppose i just say you know write me an effective social media post for an organic skin care company who is you know uh giving organic moisturizer right and when you do this the problem with this is i mean they write some good content actually so this which is written get ready to glow naturally introducing free go your luxurious organic moisturizer say goodbye to dry and dull skin help to radiant and beauty why choose organic moisturizer well 100% natural ingredients blah 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 it also put some emojis and all it probably made like a proper ad copy for you But the problem with this is, it's too generic. You know, it doesn't have any personality. It doesn't have doesn't have any emotions. Doesn't have anything which is great. So when you all of you use it for emails and other stuff, you see get some good answers. But problem is, they are too generic in nature. Do you agree with me? Give me a quick agree on chat box, right? So people who are absolutely new over here, you know, you can use chat GPT by going to chat dot openai dot com, make a login ID password, and just give instructions. If you normally give instructions on Google, right? So you can you can actually do that. So now let's try to make it better. Let's try to make this even you know 
uh, sound better, look better, read better. Now, whenever you basically are trying to do something within chat GPT, by the way, you know, uh, always, suppose you want to train a model, you can use the same window, okay? Because chat GPT's memory is limited to the same window. This is called a chat window, by the way, okay? Now, if I, if I didn't want to train the model, I can basically, when I use a new chat, it will stop remembering it what, what it did in the past. Okay? And it, it will again have a new memory. Now, just in case, if you ever want to share your chat with somebody, I want to share this chat with somebody. I want to share this chat with all of you. I can simply use this share button on top and I can simply copy this, you know, copy this thing and I can actually share this on chat box with all of you, right? And, and you know, I can actually do that as well. So we'll come to the assigning role a little later. Okay, the role, role part is very old. Everybody uses it right now. I'm going to show you something a little different than that. So, you see, when do people love an ad copy? Or when do people love a post? When there is pain point involved. You see any newspaper? In newspaper, they'll not write, so a plane crash happened. They'll not write as 98 people safe for plane crash. They will say two people died on plane crash. Why? That's a human psychology. We get attracted to negative news very, very fast. Okay? And you should blame your poems for that. You know, all the poems, unfortunately, are negative in nature. You see, Ringa Ringa Roses all fell down. Twinkle Twinkle Little Star at Fissity fell down. You know, London Bridge is falling down. Jack and Jill is falling down. And we, we have been attuned to negatives from right from childhood, which is why we love negative stuff. You see, we get attracted to negative news very easily than positive news. Do you agree with me? Yeah, give me a very on chat box. A lot of people laughing over here, but that's actually true. You know, and that's what needs to change. But we're going to use a psychological trick on chat GPT. And now we're going to see how can you make a copy better. So now what do we want? We actually want, you know, pain points. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to simply come to my chat GPT. And now I'm going to simply ask him, can you give me all the pain points that people face while using chemical products, while chemical, you know, skincare products. So now what I'm doing, I'm using a model called Research, Train and Prompt Model. It's called RTP. This is my own coin term. There's no term on the internet. If you find it, you'll find it actually. Right. So, so basically, they kind of how we normally human beings write some content. We first go and research on the internet. We read a lot of articles. Then we try to use our own brains around it. Correct. Right? So, no, same thing that same thing that we actually do over here. So look at this. Okay. You see, uh, what, what is this, what is the problem with people? People actually use skin irritation, allergic reactions, dryness and tightness, excessive oil production, you know, skin sensitivity, photosynthesis, etc., etc., etc. Give me all the possible pain points. I'm going to say, can you? Give me further issues that people face and don't repeat any pain points which are given about. So now I am going deeper and I'm, and I'm asking you to give me further pain points. So dependency on product, environmental impact, limited accessibility, ethical sourcing, fragrance sensitivity, skin barrier. So what I'm doing is I'm training my model. I'm warming up. Just like how in gym, when we do exercise, we first warm up our gym. Correct? Same way. Now I'm going to ask him, can you give me benefits of using organic skincare products? So now it's going to basically start understanding, figuring what are the benefits of these issues, harmful chemicals, gentle on sensitive skins, environmental friendly, cruelty free, no, no synthetic fragrances, nourishing ingredients, Balanced skin care, fewer filters, additives, transparency, customizable options, blah, 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 blah. It's going to give me all the positive stuff over here. Then I'm going to say, now, keeping all the knowledge in mind, can you give me a post on social media for an organic skin care product which will Help me to drive engagement and get me more shares and make it relatable. Start with pain and then product as a solution. Now look at the content. The content will completely change. It'll say, feeling fed up with chemical skincare products. Are you tired of battling sanitation, breakouts? and constant fear of applying harsh chemical to precious skin, they've been there too. But guess what? There's a natural solution to this. Introducing XYZ product, your organic skincare savior. Say goodbye to irritation, natural nourishment, ethical beauty, real results. 
John Ogalis Ninja Revolution and let's make the world a better place. Did you find this content to be better than the previous content, everybody? Give me a quick yes on chat box. In case you find this content to be more relatable, better content, and actually much, much powerful than the previous content. It was more templatized earlier. So what I did, I trained my model. I used the research-based approach. You all can do this for anything that you want. For example, you want to write a code on Python, then tell them, can you write down all the possible most common, you know, used Python codes? It'll start writing for you. Tell me what are the issues people are facing in Python? Write down for you. Tell me more issues people are facing in Python? Write down for you. Tell them, I wanted to act like a Python, you know, Python coder, and I'm looking at the Peter thing and write a better code for me. Can you write a code which needs less tokens, less, less, you know, less space, less programming language? It is the way you prompt it. If you want to give junk prompts, like what everybody else is doing it, you want to get junk results. But if you're going to give it a better prompt, you start getting better results. How many guys have found this to be gold, right? And this has actually changed the way you actually, you know, look at chat GPT right now. Yeah, well, all of us, been, as I told you, all of us have been doing chat GPT. We all, have been, we all have, you know, basically, we all have been taking things very, very well. Okay. Um, but you see, you know, it, you know, it, it is basically like doing that. No, I'm not using any prompt plugin over here. I'm using without any plugin. You see, I'm, I'm using a legacy version right now. Okay. All right. So technically, you see, you know, th this is this is basically a third party tool, but I'm not, I don't, I mean, don't use this tool. If I use this tool, I have to enable this actually. So it's a small little software. Now, when I use this, then basically it'll have its own window for it. You know, it'll have its own window. Now, see, it basically give me, this is basically what we call is a prompting guide. And I can basically start using, I mean, it, it'll make the prompt for me over here. But I normally don't like to use plugins over here. Why do I don't like to use plugins? Because plugins corrupt your system. The, the better you train your system on legacy platforms, the better it is actually. Let me keep it things very, very original, okay, at times. So this is a native chat GPT free version. And I've been doing most of my tasks using chat GPT today. Okay. In fact, this PPT, the image that you see in my PPT are also basically made on chat GPT itself. So yeah, I mean, technically web access was on, but then you shouldn't use web access because web access is of no good. Okay, chat GPT is, doesn't do a great job in web. Chat GPT does a fantastic job when it comes to, you know, Writing stuff. So if somebody's writing an email, write a presentation, write a post, write some content around it. You know, you want to write some, some future articles around it. You know, it actually does a fantastic job over there. But it doesn't do a great job, unfortunately, you know, when it basically comes to internet access. Okay. If you don't use internet, then don't use chat GPT. Use Bing on that because Bing can do a better job for you. So maybe, you know, I can give you like three, four minutes. Why don't you give it a shot? Why don't you give it a try? The way I train my model, I first ask to give pain points then further pain points, then benefits, and then I'll write content, you know, just try it out. I can give you five minutes if you want, you know, do you guys want to just give it a shot and tell me your experience? Tell me, and maybe you can, you can, you can try out something that you've worked in the past on. Okay. This is a, this is my chat window for all of you. Okay. Uh, you guys can simply just go to your chat GP right now and give it a shot. In the meanwhile, if anybody has any questions to ask me, uh, you know, I can, I can basically, you know, uh, more than happy to help you out with it. If you have some time, please discuss some on Suno Bug. It's amazing open source from text to voice and open source. Yeah, I mean, it's great, you know, Kingship, but I haven't really used Bug too much. I'm using a model called RVC. So I can probably give you some insights on that. Maybe I have to research on this option called Bar because I, have, I personally haven't used that tool yet. I personally haven't used that, you know, that option yet, to be very honest. Okay. All right. Um... Okay, so let's let's kind of you know like let's kind of go forward. Can can we create MS Office files? Well, not the free version though. Okay, but uh, the paid version can actually the paid version can actually do that. Okay, so uh, go to see what do we use for web data searching? Good question. Let me help you understand that. Okay, how many of you guys over here usually do a lot of research? You probably do a lot of product research. Give me a quick me on chat box. You do some research on products. You know, on on stock markets maybe. You know. Maybe you're, you know, on your, this thing. So I'm going to show something very interesting right now. I can simply use a Bing chat over here. This is a Bing chat window. Okay. And when I go to Bing chat, so let's take for example that I'm a finance guy, you know, and I basically want to do something on stock market. I want to quickly do an analysis. I want to do a quick fundamental analysis of data motor stock. So I'm going to simply say, you know, can you give me a quick table and perform 
the financial ratio analysis on Tata Motors stock. So this is a chat GPT can't do, but Bing can do it very well. Bing is powered by chat GPT 4. Okay. So what happens is it will now read the internet. Okay. It will see the data over there. And now it will actually make an entire table for you. It will actually tell you what's the price to earning ratio, price to sales ratio, price to cash flow ratio, price to book ratio, EBITDA for the company. It also give you the source for it as well. Okay. And then if you want, you can also ask him, can you give me a consolidated view, consolidated view on stock recommendation of Tata Motors and what broking houses are saying, what broking houses are recommending to buy or sell. Okay. So, so let, see, it's only an explanation to you, like, you know, it is this high, low industry average. It actually gave me the entire ratio. Now, imagine if I have to put this together, it's going to take me ages. Okay. But now, you know, it's actually doing the entire stuff on its own. It doesn't require ID password though. You simply just go to bing.com, go to chat window, use it without user ID password. Okay. Yes, you can, you can use a benchmark, you know. So basically, whatever is on the internet, you know, it, 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 can, it can simply do that as well for you. Okay. Now look at this. I suppose if I ask you to give me a recommendation, you know, um, basis this, okay, and tell me exactly that what the bother would not see. It'll search, search the internet again. It'll search the internet again, figure things out, and give me something in tabular format. Right? Tell me guys haven't used Bing in that particular way. Give me a quick, you know, awesome in case you find this to be like super amazing. And you think you know, in, in case you think that it can really cut down your research by Half the time. So now imagine if I do different different websites and keep on saying buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. It's going to take me ages. But now, because I'm using Chat GPT, it's, it's, you know, it's going to give me it's going to give me the source. It's telling me whether to buy, whether to sell, and basically like you know what people are saying about it right now, right? So it's actually amazing. You know, it's, it's not about the AI tool as a tool. It's about how you use it. Now same thing also also is it for product research. For let's say I'm about two products. Let's say I'm trying to buy a camera, right? And suppose, say for example, if I just come over here and if I just ask them, can you compare Nikon and Canon basic camera DSLR and tell me which is the best? Okay. So now, basically, you know, it'll actually compare to the two cameras, you search and search on the internet, figure things out, give me a tableau comparison. And, you know, suppose if I want to buy something, I'm, I'm not really sure about it. You know, it, it's going to compare for me and give it to me. Right. So people are not been using this tool in, in that particular way. Right. Though they've been using these tools, you know, um, for quite some time, but then they, they're not been using this tool, you know, in the way in which I'm saying right now. Right. But you can use it, you know, use Bing for that. So Bing is not bad. Uh, Bing is great. It's just about the way you actually use it. Pretty cool, everybody. Give me a cool on chat box. Why is it super cool? Okay. So you can think chat only has been teaching notes, text forms, or if you want to do graphic videos, how can you use it? No, you can use graphic videos in this. For that, you have to basically use a paid version for it. You can, I'll explain you how does it really work. Varun, you know, Srinivas Bhatt here, the data used in response is old means we can't use it for real time analysis. Am I correct? Yes. In chat GPT, the data is until 2021. Uh, but the data is old and new depending on what you use it for. If you're going to use product research, don't use chat GPT. It will give you a bad response. But then Bing can give you accurate response. With Bing searches the internet in real time. Okay. Mr. Srinivas, I hope that, I hope that really helped you. Okay. So let me let me just kind of show you now. You know, um, on basically how to create videos. So for you like about videos, videos, videos. Okay. Um, let me show you a chat GPT speed version for it. Okay, not the free version though. Because free version can't do this, but a paid version can actually do this. So let's do this right now. So I'm using a, I'm using a paid version of GPT also. It's called GPT-4. Okay. So G, no, GPT-4, you have to use something called the plugin. What is the plugin? Plugin basically is a third party software, which I can integrate with chat GPT. So the paid tool of chat GPT can actually also do that, you know, for yourself. So what I can do is GPT-4. 
come down over here and I'm going to use a plugin by the name called rephrase.ai. So what's the plugin? Plugin is like a web store. They've got tie up with multiple softwares, multiple images. In fact, now uh, they also have a tie up with Canva. So just in case, if you're using Canva a lot, you can actually, you can actually build your creatives using Canva as well. Okay. So now let me just probably show you <laughs> how can I use ChatGPT to create a video for myself? Suppose if I just go to ChatGPT, I'm going to say, can you help me create a video on, you know, on using AI to increase productivity at workplace? Okay. So now, before it creates a video, it, it, it's probably going to give you a script. Okay. And it, it, it can actually do that for you. So basically, it, it will give you a entire script over here. And once you basically read the script, okay, and then only it will basically make a video for you. Okay. So see, now it's going to give me a script. And um, let me write the entire script down for you. Okay, so now, you know, it basically made an entire script for me over here, right? Now, if, you know, if, if this video is script is absolutely fine, I'm going to say, yes, make a video. And then it's going to use this plugin called rephrase.ai. With this particular plugin, it will actually now create a video for me, okay? And it will actually just simply build a video for my, you know, for my brand, okay? Or for my script. In fact, if, if I have a script, I could give my own script to them. And based on my based on my own script, you know, it, it can also basically create, you know, stuff for me automatically. Let's see what happens now. So now, you know, it does that. And it's going to give me a link over here. And um, then when I click on the link, it's going to take me it's going to take a couple of couple of time. And basically, it, it, it's going to take a couple of minutes to actually, like, you know, it's going to take about five, six minutes to create a video. But then... Uh, I'll just show you one of my existing results which I made from the same tool so that you can really get a good perspective over here. Okay. So in the past, I've actually used it to create multiple videos. Okay. Ex so see, I, I made a video on how Excel is more powerful and this is using rephrase.ai. Let me show this one to you. Excel is a powerful spreadsheet program that can help you organize and analyze data. With Excel, you can create charts and graphs to visualize your data. Excel's formulas and functions make it easy to perform complex calculations. Excel can be used for budgeting, financial analysis, project management, and more. Excel's data analysis tools can help you make informed business decisions. Excel is widely used in the business world, so knowing how to use it can give you a competitive edge. Do you find it super cool? Give me a quick cool on chat box. Right? So this is all made by AI. You know, no human intervention. So this is exactly, you know, um, how uh, things are actually going ahead. Okay. So yeah, I mean, not in this tool, there are other tools in which you can actually do that. Okay. But, uh, but you know, it can, it, but, you know, it can actually do this pretty well. Okay. This is basically, you know, one such thing which you actually do with AI. Now, just in case, Excel is so just in case you want to make a presentation right now. So basically, when this video is made, I'll show a presentation to you as well. So they basically can have one more plugin over here. So it's okay. I think I'm going to go to new chat over here. Let me just probably use Canva. Let's see if you can, it can make presentation using Canva. I'm going to save, you know, build me a presentation using Canva on threats against cyber attacks. So now, you know, it's, it's going to write a text for me. 
So Ruby, you can do that not in not in refresh or AI tool. You can use it. You can use Ruby to go to do a DID. In DID, you can do that, but not but not over here. Okay. So now, so now, is is going to give me templates? Okay. Uh, for the presentation. So I'm going to say, you know, let's first finish an entire template for me. This is all in the paid version, not in the free version, though. Okay. But I'm going to, I'm going to show you a free tool as well. Okay. So now, you know, um, I'm going to simply say, okay, like, let me just probably put up the first one, you know, the gray minimalistic version of it. Okay. I'm going to say, use the first version and can you put a content together and give me a ppt in canva right so then you know let's hope it can let's i'm not sure you know if you can do that or not so yeah it's obviously it gave me a proposed structure title introduction you know uh, common types of cyber threats they charge approximately, you know, twenty dollars, about eighteen hundred bucks a month. That's not too much. So no, Canva is all open source. Technically, there'll be no copyright issue. Okay. <coughs> so, so, so now it's it. I'm going to say yes. Populate in Canva. And give me the PPT in Grim Reviews presentation. So now, you know, it's going to use Canva, this content together, put it in the presentation, and give it to me. And then I can use this. Okay. And it'll give me a link after that. How cool is that? Right? So now, so now basically, you know, you, you, you can actually start using Canva. And, uh, you know, and then, then, then you actually can like, you know, give the entire content to you in no time. So there's no, the Canva paid plugin, I mean, you just have to pay to chat GPT. The rest of the plugins are a part of chat GPT itself. You don't have to pay Canva separately for it, to be very honest. Okay, so now, so now it can actually, it can actually do that. Unfortunately, saying because I think this will, this will work in progress. But you know, you can actually do that. So the response will be different. So basically, whenever you know you actually uh, give the same prompt, your and my response will be different because ChatGPT is designed to give different responses every single time. Okay, now there's there's one more tool you can use. There's a tool called Tome.app. Now all these other tools I'm going to show you. Unfortunately, you cannot export them into PDFs. You have to basically use a uh, Paid version, I mean, for exporting into PDF, but it can actually it can do the job. It can make a PowerPoint presentation for you pretty fast, right? So you can simply come to this website called Tome.app, log in with your account, Okay, so as I come over here, okay, I simply say create, give me a topic, you know, that, that you basically want to make a presentation on anybody, any topic, your choice. Um, okay, let me, let me talk about, okay, selecting 
and it's UV car. Okay. So now when I do that, you know, it should ask me, give me an outline of presentation, how the presentation should be. You know, we would provide you the CV car, consider your needs, research options, blah, 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 blah. I say continue. Okay. And then, you know, it should basically make a stuff for me. And then it, it'll actually make a presentation for me extremely, extremely quick. Okay, so here we go. You see, it put an image, put the data in there. So suppose if I just click on share button, if I share this link with you, you know, you, you can see the, see the same presentation that I, saw, that I see, and you know, we can actually do that. So I have, so I've used Slide GPT. I think uh, Tomb is much better app as compared to any other app which I've seen so far. Okay, so you see, it's the introduction. Why choose an SUV? Consider your needs, research your options, test and try, evaluate, conclusion. It basically like puts an entire thing together for you. And best thing is everything is editable. I can simply edit everything. I can take double click, change stuff, change my content. So you know, it's still very basic in presentation format, but yeah, it's free. You can use it for yourself. You can do that. Then you can see one more app. It's called Gamma. Gamma AI. Okay. With Gamma AI, I think you, you will be able to export it. You will be able to export it you know, in your, in your, in your desired, uh, PDF format. Okay. It's again, a very good AI tool and even it can be presentations for you. So just in case people want to make presentations for free of course, without having an integration, you know, you can, you can do that as well. So there's a limit in prompting in both free and paid version, you know, uh, so far. Okay. Uh, in both the cases, there's a limit, uh, but in the paid version, what happens is you know, you technically can, um, you know, uh, you have more options of exporting in the PDF file and all. It's about $10, I believe, is what they charge you every month for this one. Okay. So suppose I want to like, you know, put a topic together. Let me just put a topic saying that, you know, um, let's take if I just say, okay. Types of software testing. So now the ones that do that, you know, I'm gonna it's a, it's a little bit of 400 credits. Okay, it's gonna give me an outline. I'm once I'm happy the outline, I just simply say okay, continue. And then you know it's gonna basically give me a theme, uh, some some very interesting color scheme. Okay, I simply say okay, let me just probably make this, you know. Uh, theme a little better. I'm going to say this is surprise me, right? Let me just ask them to pick up a theme for me. Continue, right? So now it simply just puts the entire thing together. Types of it's interesting. My Motwani, you know, you know, testing developers role, testing process benefits, integration testing. You know, just put the one, two, three, four system testing. <coughs> Isn't this like, wow, I mean, how cool is that? You know, I'm just sitting, relaxing, somebody else doing my PPT work. I mean, isn't this like super duper cool, right? So Gamma is was one of the best tools that I've seen so far in, in a busy making presentation till now, okay? And it just makes life so easy, right? And once I'm happy with this, again, I can just simply share this PPT with anybody that I want. And I can actually like export this also to my PDF, uh, or PowerPoint version as well. And yeah, I mean, it's pretty guys free. Yeah, it's free, half free, half paid. Right? Yes, you can edit it. You can edit the PPT and all. You know, you can do all that stuff. Like what do you do in tone? So yeah. You double click, change stuff, double click, change the image. Everything is there. Yes, you can do that, Siva. But then what are you prompted initially to just put everything together from that particular perspective and later on you can, you can just do it by yourself. Did you guys find this to be super duper cool and time saving? Look at this. Software testing, challenges in software testing, benefits of software testing, regression testing, acceptance testing, right? System testing, integration testing, unit testing. My God. 
if i would have researched and I put together i would take an ages to me but but yeah but the only software that the back end of powered by chat gpt but you know i can do that can i mail by using some some key points some keywords yeah i can do that so mails for mail you should use this for mail you should be actually using chat gpt itself right so i can use chat gpt for writing an email for myself okay but uh, i hope this is super duper amazing okay now so we just saw the first problem which is all zero short prompting right how many guys over here are still now learning something new you learning something interesting you actually are enjoying this give me a quick enjoy and give you are loving this so far Okay, guys. So, 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 currently, like you know, we are halfway through. So, what we'll do is we'll quickly take like a you know, we'll, we'll actually take like a quick uh ten minute break right now. So, you know, we are at four thirty five. Let's take a ten minute break. We'll have some tea, coffee, and come back. After you come back from break, I'm going to show you some very advanced prompting. How do you prompt it to do better for you? Okay. Let's take a ten minute break till now. Let's come back at four forty five. And meanwhile, if you're enjoying this workshop, please go out there and tag you know at four on LinkedIn. Tag me on LinkedIn, right? And talk about what you're learning in session so far. That's the first thing you should be doing. Okay. Second thing is you can, you can actually also go out there and leave a Google review. You know, on the uh, Ed Forces uh, Google review page. Okay, and you, and you, you, you can basically simply do that as well. So basically, just go to LinkedIn, write about experience, write about how you guys are feeling so far, write about what you learned till now. Tag me, tag Ed Force, and tag Ed Talks as well. Go to Google review review about session so far. Okay, so we'll take a quick ten minute break. We'll come back after the break. Okay, you know, a chatbot over here. So I'm going to simply come to my chat GPT. I'm going to say, I will be pasting a job description. I want you to be trained. In understanding the job role and the exact requirement, post which I will keep pasting candidate's resume. You give me a tabular analysis whether they possess a skill for the job. And give me a score from one to five. Understood. This is what is what I call is pre-training my chat GPT. Right. So if you so, so understand my command, you can first ask for job description. I say below is the job description. After I paste this, don't type anything. Wait for my uh, entry of resume, and then give me analysis of a resume with respect to my job description. So now I simply pasted the entire resume. It says, it says "Thank you so much." And it's also no understanding job requirement, understanding skills required for this. And you know, it's basically just putting everything together for its own usage, okay. And it also telling what qualifications required, etc., etc., etc. Everything is perfect. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to simply then come and I'm going to use my own resume. I'm going to simply just go to my profile over here. This is my profile. I'm going to simply just copy this, come back over here, paste it. Now it understands. It will give me a score whether I am perfectly fitting for all of these things or not. What skills I don't have? I don't have account marketing. I don't have email marketing skill sets. Um, you know, it's going to give me score. This is that. Either many, many skills. Additionally, European market is not mentioned. Resume. Mine is an MBA from Tier One B school. 
He seems to have some background and he should do this. How many of you guys over here are mind blown with this right now? Give me a MD, a mind blown on a chat box. The chat GPT has not been used before like this. Right? I just converted chat GPT into, you know, a, a, you know, a resume thing. I just copied and pasted it from my own document. That's it. And then I can then I can then I can simply just copy and paste multiple resumes for every resume, resume is going to give me a output. Similarly, uh, similarly, you know, I can do the I can do the opposite. I can just say, you know, I'm going to give you my resume, and after which. Tell you which job I'm applying for. Can you help me with understanding what skill I possess and what is missing? Else, of course, I do that. I'm gonna say this is my resume. Okay. Here's my resume, and then I'm gonna simply say, let me let me let me take a new job this time. I'm gonna go to my jobs. Let me go to this job clarity technologies. Simply just copy this entire thing. Copy this. Copy this. Okay. Come back to a chat GPT. I'm going to say below is a job description. And Give me a tabular analysis of skills that I possess. And then it will then give me a tabular analysis of whether I possess or don't possess on it. Okay. So it doesn't matter. I mean, even if it makes a spelling mistake, don't worry about it. Chat GB takes care of it. But the idea is I'm just going to show you that. What is chat GPT capable of? Okay. So, you know, we all have been using chat GPT, but we never use chat GPT like this the way I am showing you right now. So you can start building your own stuff. You can start building your own bots and actually, you know, make things a little different. Pretty useful, everybody. Yeah. And do you think now this is actually going to help you, you know, uh, to kind of do that. Okay. So let me just probably show you one more time. Okay. What I, what I just did right now. So I. Let me just load this thing. So what I did first. You know, I give it a proper instruction. See, everything is everything is about your prompting skills. Everything is about your instruction skills. So I give it instruction that I'll be pasting a job description. And I wanted to be trained in understanding what's the job role. So if I'm in HR, what I want? I want somebody to know what's job role, right? And ChatGPT is, is smart. It can understand the data pretty well, right? Post which, I'll keep pasting candidate's resume. So I'm going to keep on pasting different people's resume. And then give me a tabular analysis and help me whether they, whether they possess skill or not. Okay? And give me a score from 1 to 5. That's it. Very simple instruction. What the first thing I did, I first took a JD from LinkedIn, pasted it over here, right? As it is. I don't even format it properly. No, nothing. ChatGPT is smart. It can pick up things, you know, from here automatically. So it, it understood the requirement. It summarized the requirement for me. What, what skills they want, what they think want, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then I said, okay, this is a candidate. Okay. This is a resume of the person. So I put my resume, Mitesh Mokwani. Okay. I simply put my entire resume over here. I'm going to put my resume. Okay. Then basically it understood my resume, understood job description, figure out the skill set and tell me whether I had a skill set or not. No, no. But though I know email marketing, but email marketing doesn't reflect in my 
my resume. I feel it's a very small skill to put it, but the skill is important. So I should put that in my CV, right? Competitive intelligence. I don't have any competitive intelligence put up in my resume. I should put that. That's a good rule. I don't have PR put up in my resume. I have experience in PR, but I haven't put that as well. Right? So I exactly know that where I'm lacking and what the recruiter is looking for. Right? And a recruiter can see it. Where the candidate is lacking. Okay? And what can what can basically do? So this is how you sim- use with simple, simple instructions and simple simply are doing that. With a job simple perspective, you can do the same thing for yourself, Shruti. You, you, you can see whether the resume contains those things that the recruiter is looking for. Without looking for it, you have to put it. If you have the experience, put it. If you don't have the experience, don't put it in that scenario. Okay? All right. Nagendra, can ChatGPT help us giving glorious self appraisal even if the form is portrait? We can write text for you. Yes, it, yes, you can do that. Yeah, but the thing is that that will not help you. Huh? Self appraisal basically is, uh, you know, for somebody else to talk about how good you are. Correct. So, so yeah. This is not it's not a this is not a plugin. I'm using a free version of Chat GPT. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you share the can you share the link this link with us? Okay. So. And let me just do that. Okay. So here we go. This is the link for all of you. So you can try to use this for yourselves. Pretty cool, everybody. So you've seen enough. You've seen basically about chat GPT, how to use it differently, right? And let me take you through some other AI tools, typically. Okay, uh, Lakshmi Narayan, what if you have multiple candidates against a single position? Can you actually provide analysis? Yes. That's what I did right now, Lakshmi Narayan. So you have to give to page resume one by one. You can paste all five resumes and ask them to do it for you. Okay. Um, you know, but but you can just you can simply like keep on like doing it, just pasting it, pasting it, pasting it, pasting it. That's smart. You can do that. Um, can I generate my resume based on JD? Well, yes, you can do that, Arun. Okay. So let me just show you. Let's take for example, it has my job description. Someone say, can you tweak my resume? Match it with the job description. And then you know, it can actually understand the job description. And, you know, it, it'll actually make the entire resume for me automatically. Right. Right. So it is it is just the view prompted, nothing else. Okay. Okay. So can I get a generate my resume based on the GD? I already told you that. Okay. Cool. All right. What if okay, multiple candidates will surely answer that question as well? All right, cool. Okay. So I hope you found this to be very interesting, everybody. Yeah. Was it helpful to everyone? Was it was a value addition to them? What have you been using ChatGPT so far? Right. So you know, it's actually it's on the tool, as I told you. It's about how you use the tool. That's what really matters. Okay. Let me now go a little further, okay? And let me just, in fact, uh, show you some other AI tools. Okay. So there are more AI tools in the market which actually do like pretty cool job, okay? One of my personal favorite AI tools currently is this website called Stable Diffusion. Okay. So this is Stable Diffusion. Stable Diffusion can help you create your images, text, or presentations, File, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Very, it's a very cool tool actually. Okay. And let me show you how does it really work. So I suppose, I suppose I come, I just simply say, can you help me with a realistic product photo shoot for an organic skincare brand? <laughs> Okay. And suppose if I just say cinematic default in my style, this is generate. And then, you know, it's going to use my text 
understand what I want. And basis that now it'll actually generate an image for me. It's only a little bit of time. It'll take approximately, it's take approximately 48 seconds to approximately a minute or so. Let's give it a minute or so. Okay. And this is a very interesting tool. It's basically what we call as stable diffusion. Stable diffusion of the technology, which is basically, which is, which is basically the first technology to do text to image, right? So I can put in my text prompt, based on my text prompt, it can actually make a image for me. Right. And uh, it does a pretty decent job. Let me tell you that. Okay. It's pretty cool. So let's just make that for me right now. Okay. Text to video. First of all, I show text to video to you already, Santosh. You can use a chat GPT plugin called refuse.ai. And refuse.ai can do a text to video for you. Right. It can make a human avatar, build a video for you, and do that. You see, look at this. Look at the image. Look at the quality. Look at the way it's are done, right? Pretty. I mean, do you find this to be like very realistic, everybody? Yeah. So, you know, it's actually quite amazing. I mean, I am. I'm always blown. You know, when I kind of see things uh, like this. Now, let me just. I can also use styles like advertising, for example. You know, I want to make it advertising based. Let's see. We okay. actually build advertising from here now. So, you know, so the thing is, people made cartoon characters. They made, they basically made multiple stuff using AI. It's free. Yeah. What I'm showing is free. Nothing, nothing I'm showing you basically is paid for right now. Can graph of characteristics? Well, no, it can't make graphs for you as of now, Shravan. Um, you know, for building graphs and all, you need to essentially, you know, um, have a lot of data with you. And ChatGPT is a text to text model, it is not a text to image model, you know. So basically, uh, you know, ChatGPT cannot, cannot typically build images for you. Okay. But yeah, but you know, it can actually, I mean, there are other AI tools for that. So every, everything is, everything today basically has one of the other AI tools. See, AI is evolving in the text to video space, text to image, text to image is, is pretty advanced as of now, I would say, but you know, it is, it is getting evolving in, um, you know, in the video graphs, charts, but I won't be surprised very soon to start doing that. Look at this from an advertising perspective, you know, it can, it can start like doing some very, very amazing stuff. So, you know, so, I mean, it's just a matter of time. You start seeing AI doing very amazing. Some time back, AI actually was not even able to make proper images. It was making very basic, boring images. But now, you know, AI has come to a point where, uh, where actually, it actually is doing pretty cool. Okay. Uh, and people have made some of the most, most amazing visuals. So just to give you some example, yeah, let me just make it uh, at see people have made these kind of images, okay, using AI. All these are AI generated images. Now suppose you want to see like how how they made this printed image, you can, you can actually go and see the prompt for it. You can actually see what kind of prompt that they used, you know, what kind of things they have used. So some images are very good, some images are very bad, but suppose you want cartoonic images. You can do that as well. Suppose you want you want cartoons, you want 3D images, you want portraits, you can do that as well. We have a plugin tool to edit raw images from DSLR. So you can use Adobe Firefly. Adobe already has that around. So you might want to use Adobe Firefly for that. And you know it can actually do that for you. No, there's, there's a limit to ChatGPT. ChatGPT has no limitation in terms of you putting MCQs or putting questions or making it. Right. I mean, it technically can do a lot of things as of now. Right. So, you know, it, it, it doesn't have any limitation in that to be very honest. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you one last thing and then basically I'll, I'll open the floor for question and answers. I think just to give you a perspective. How many guys over here are data geeks? You're in data science, data analytics background. Give me a data on chat box. 
you know, data, data background, data analysis. Okay. Okay. Amazing. I teach use data for data a lot. So now I'm going to show you something which will be a little frightening, a little threatening for all of you, maybe, you know, but I'm going to show you the capability of how AI actually is changing stuff. So there's, there's a tab called advanced data analysis on chat GPT. It's a feature, which is a paid feature again, not a free feature though. And, you know, I can simply upload data over here. I can simply like just plus, press the plus sign and I can simply upload the data. So now I can simply just come over here. Let me just upload us, upload dummy data on chat GPT right now. <laughs> just to give you a perspective what the data can do. This data basically, you know, can actually show you very interesting stuff. So when I open up this, this data set, you see, it contains order, order quantity, order number, price, analysis, customer name, etc., etc., etc. It gives a very interesting mix. The data is pretty big. It's got approximately 1500 entries still now. It's a huge data set that I'm using right now. Okay. Simple dummy data that I'm using right now. So I simply come, I just simply say, can you give me a comprehensive data analysis on this and share business insights? That's it. Just one line prompt. Now, what will ChatGPT do? It will start reading data. You should start understanding the Excel sheet. Okay. And, um, you know, once I, you know, once I basically, um, you know, do this, it, it's going to read the data. And it, it's going to tell me what exactly what each of the data self contains. Now, once it does that, this will tell me like, you know, what should it perform? So it should it perform on descriptive statistics, time analysis, product analysis, customer analysis, right? And then, no, it's not, it's not in the free version. It's only the paid version. So I'm going to say, yes, proceed. And now it will read the data. It will now do the entire analysis and give it to me in one minute. So probably for which I was going to take the entire day, chat GPT is Python. And they actually perform data analysis for me. So it was the average, minimum, maximum, price, average, minimum, maximum. Sales, again, minimum, maximum. Then we'll put the time analysis over here. You can see now, it actually made the entire chart for me. It, it, it will usually give me monthly sales trends, quarterly sales trends, yearly sales trends. Then it will do product analysis for me. Yeah, it can do that also for me. You can put Excel sheet data, tell him what the error is. I mean, if it's plain, like, you know, like where you see the errors, and it will just analyze and give it to you. So now it's going to give me which product is the best. What's the distribution, you know, how the distribution is looking like, which, which product is selling the most, not selling the most. Yes, Lisa, you can do that. But problem is that if your data set is too, if your data set is too large, like my data set is 1500 rows, that you can do in the free version. Okay. 
How do you attach XML? So basically, Swami, I'm using a paid version. In the paid version, there's a tab called Advanced Data Analysis. Once you do that, you can simply use a plus sign and you can actually upload an Excel sheet automatically up here. Yeah. Is that in the paid version? No, in the free version. Okay. So, Shobha, can you create Tableau? No, it can't create Tableau for you. Okay. It can basically, uh, it can just make charts within Python for you. For Tableau, you have to take the data in Tableau and you have to perform analysis in that. So, when you go to the paid version for me, simply go to the settings over here on the left hand side bottom. You have to go to simply go to the option called, you know, uh, settings in beta, and then go to this thing called beta features, enable these two things, plugins and advanced analysis tab. Once you enable these two, these two features, then simply go to chat GPT-4, go to data analysis, and you can start uploading data over there. So you have to enable it. It's not enabled by default, unfortunately. Okay. So now you see, it actually gave me an entire analysis of my top customers, top products, you know, told me what's my sales monthly trend, quarterly trend, yearly trend, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. How cool is that? Give me a quick cool on chat box. It is, it is totally now, totally like mind blown. And you're totally like wondering that like this is next level stuff, you know? So then in case basically for, for now, if I want to do some statistical description analysis, I want to do some Keynes analysis, clustering analysis, regression model behavior, ANOVA behavior, right? I can do everything. But if I, even if I share this chat window with you, I'm not sure charts will come or not because they normally, you see, you will be able to download images or files from here. So you cannot see this when I, when I share the chat windows with you. You can just see the way I prompted it. That's about it. You can see the data. That's not allowed. Okay. Okay. So this is basically like, you know, uh, some interesting stuff I had from a chat GPT perspective. Now, I have about 15, 20 minutes with all of you. I can probably take some question answers, some doubts, you know, in case you have for me. Uh, more than happy to help you out with any <clears throat> specific questions that you have. Certainly. I found this question very interesting. I would like to point this to you in case it has no. not been addressed. Uh, someone said that uh, Prakash Bhanu said, I just searched an image which is generated by this AI and I found an exact match on the website. Is mm. this actually referring the image from the web or is changing mm. this? No, so, 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 so I think it changes it. See, what happens sometimes is Maybe the image that you're seeing on the web is actually an AI based image only. So somebody must have put an AI based image. So what happens, you know, there are only a similar inferiors right now. Image is still evolving space at this point in time. But then see, ultimately the model is trained from the from the image on the web itself, right? So the model recreates images for itself. You can notice when I use the stable diffusion playground, you know, uh, it, it, it was not able to put text in the image because currently the tools are not designed to give text in the image. They can just basically build an image. But every single time the AI tool will generate image on its own. It's a self-generated image. And it is not going to basically take an image from the internet and just push it out for you. Okay. That the tool doesn't work that way. One it, question which I read somewhere. And, and, sorry to interrupt. Yeah? Yes, the tool will automatically create images, you know, on its own every single time. So maybe they can be similar, they can they can be similar images, but they can't be a same image for sure. Okay. Uh, one of the questions which I had was, uh, I personally observed that the labels had something gibberish written in them. Yeah, can correct. it be customized to that level that we can have our own label? You can't. So then, so then you have to take out that's the thing. The, the image, text to image tool today can't use text inside the image. So you have to take out that image, maybe use a Photoshop, maybe use some Adobe Firefly tool to edit the text inside that. Because they are not designed to give you text inside the image. My last question about the same image thing would be, can I create a Diwali post with a logo of say uh, Times Pro and create? No, uh... you can't. No, you can't. So you so you can't put your logos inside it. You can maybe create an image, then you can export the image to Canva, then you can put your image on it, and you then you can put a logo on it. But Great. you technically cannot do that within the text to image tool. Great. Any other questions? Okay, so I can ask a question from Kingshuk. Can I? I found negative prompt nowadays. A lot of various diffusion models. Is it really helpful? Yes, it is helpful. See, because negative prompts, why are negative prompts used for? Let's take for example that, you know, um, I want to generate a human image. But sometimes what happens is I don't want spectacles in the image. Now they must have put spectacles in the image. So I can use negative prompt to avoid them putting spectacles. Sometimes they put six fingers, seven fingers. Sometimes they distort your faces. So negative prompts are used to tell what not to do. So suppose I can say no distorting of face, no three eyes, no two noses. So, you know, you can describe what you don't want in the image. 
and then the AI model will ensure that you don't have that in the image. That's a negative prompting. Okay. I got a question from Anusuya. She think can AI tools help in hardware product design? Well, yes, it can do that. So, you know, you, you, you can't use table diffusion for that. You have, so you can use a tool called Mid Journey. It's a paid tool, sort of free tool though. It works in the Discord server. So you'll have to use Discord for it. Then you can install Mid Journey on it. And in Mid Journey, you can design future product images, 3D models, 3D images, you can do all that stuff. But that's a paid tool, it's not a free tool, unfortunately. Okay. One thing I find, okay, so the one thing I found on ChatGPT that we are able to save our chats in, with title. Yes, you can do that. It's automatically saved. You know, um, they are auto saved actually. So, uh, so it's like you created a video based on some script. There were other than avatar based reporters. So, can we put some, some other phrase in it? Well, not in the rephrase or IO version. But there's a tool called Studio DID, which is a paid tool. In that, you can do it. You can, you can put your own images, you can put your own avatars, you can do that. And these things, so can you dive down how to put apps, additional add, add apps on chat GPT? Anybody do that. Okay. So if you really want to use it for apps, you'll have to simply just one second, wait. Simply just come down over here, click on this option over here. Go to first of all, first of all, go to settings, give it a feature, enable this, you know, plugins. Once you enable the plugins, you simply go to new chat GPT, go to GPT-4, go to plugins, and then, and then you can go to the single plugin stores, plugin stores. Once you go to plugin store, then you can basically type whatever app you want. Suppose I want, say, an app on design. So, when I do that, see, it's going to be resume designer, graduate resume, diary, pod designs, whatever it is, right? Suppose if, for example, I want to use Canva, I can use Canva. So whatever it is, I can simply keep on using whatever I want. Suppose I want to see new apps, I can see what are the new apps available, you know, uh, within chat GPT. Suppose I want to see one of the popular ones. These are popular ones. Ask the code, ask your PDF, diagram, show me. You can make diagrams, you can make, you can make different, different codes, whatever you want. So, you know, so basically you can, you can search an Expedia, some travel itinerary, whatever, right? So you can just simply do that as well. So there are multiple ways and plugins. You can simply explore that for yourself. Okay. <coughs> mm. Best mail response prompts. So I mean, you just simply prompted like, you know, what is the type of email that you want? What's the tonality of the email that you want? You know, how you basically want the email to help your audience. Correct. So just how you instruction to a person, you instruction to chatbot, very simple. No rocket science over there. How to train a test data and get new test data? Well, Pratap, for that, you have to use a chat GPT paid version. Put your test data, tell them to, you know, like, um, recreate data in a different format. It'll give it to you. Can you chat with your mobile? See, you can do that. It's a Chrome-based browser, Ruby. If you just go to this browser, type chat.openai.com, put a login ID password, and then start using it. Okay. What are the settings? I'll show you, show, show you again. So I already showed you. You simply have to go to this option called, you know, you go to your login. Settings and beta features, uh, beta features, enable plugins. Once you enable the plugin, come to chat GPT-4, go to plugins. Then simply go back, go down to present plugin store, uh, and then simply you can install your plugins of your choice. Okay. Okay. <coughs> okay. How can you use restrict AI for not misusing and fraudulent things? It already does that, Santosh. If you ask me to make a bomb, it will not make a bomb for you. So AI has its own governing control. Um, if you ask a negative question, it will not answer to you. Can you charge you for making HR reports from free version chat GPT? Well, Ruby, it depends what report you want to make. You have to give your data with it. You have to give your data to it. So make a pivot table, give basic data to chat GPT, ask it to build a report, but it's not going to make images for you. No images, no graphs, only textual based thing. It will give it to you. Okay. Is there a way to identify practical practical content in AI? For, sorry, particular content, for instance, when a resume gets refined based on JD, how can a recruiter identify if profile is genuine? Well, you can't, unfortunately. That's a problem with AI tools right now. Well, but you can see whether the tool is written by AI or not. There are some, there's something called GPT detectors or AI detection tools. There's a tool called GPT-0, for example. You can copy-paste an entire stuff over there. It will tell you whether it's written by chat GPT or not. But sometimes they also, they also have false positive so there are reasons they're written on your own, but they start showing that it's written by an AI. So you can't really trust these tools, but there are tools which can identify AI to content for you at this point in time. Okay. Matlubali, is there a secure to put our data on ChatGPT? 
Well, your chat GPT data reveals in your logins. As you saw when I shared data, you, you, you may data access in which ways. So, you can simply, simply say, currently it's very fair, but then chat GPT team can read the data out and they can use the data if they want to. But they don't do it to public. Okay. If you're so, so concerned about data, don't use chat GPT. Maybe you want to you, you want to build your own chat GPT within a company using it as your open AI source. That's expensive, but you have to do with it. Okay. Thank you so much, Mithun. Uh, Rahul, home to send screenshots, maybe I should just answer that. Can you please attach an Excel for analysis and show? I did that for me, right? So, I mean, it's very simple. You know, once you come to your advanced data analysis, you simply come to chat GPT4, advanced data analysis tab, right? Click on the plus sign over here. And you can actually like, you know, upload it in Excel data. So you can simply like, I have a dummy data right now. Upload the data. And then ask a question. Suppose I say, make a time series chart on sale of car, right? So now it will just read the data, it'll understand that, and then, then it's gonna give me a chart basis that. So you can use it for making a chart, doing analysis, doing a data analysis for yourself, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? But you have to have the paid version for it, not the free version, okay? Okay. Mm. If only using to create content, can you use ChatGPT4? Yes, you can use it because ChatGPT4 uh, language is better. They you know they basically are uh, a better content generation as compared to anybody else. Okay, is there a, is there a regulatory body or standard organization that's formed to standard to prevent negative use of AI? Well, yes, there are plenty of them in the market right now. So AI for good. Even ChatGPT has its own council, but currently it's in any preliminary stage right now. But yeah, to do that, can I convert a legacy code say from Fortran to C plus plus by giving separate codes? Well, you can. I think I'm not a coder, but is this a common link between both of them? You can. I guess so. Please add here the names of free tools you've shown. Uh, so I'll do, I'll do that towards the end, Apurva. Okay. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Neeraj. Marketing question. Will Google Crawler identify chat GPT data and so it can work on negative SEO? No, not really. So Google already said that in a statement that it doesn't matter if the content is written by AI or written by human. If the content is helpful, you know, it's going to rank it any which ways. Right. I can give you my own example. So today when you go to Google, type over here, chat GPT, Trainer, for example, I currently rank on Google searches. I'm on number one position right now. That's how many companies find me, right? So what typically happens is this entire content is written by AI. My entire page is written by AI. Okay. So I'm ranking on it. I think you can rank it too. Okay. Um, so if we can use ChatGPT code snippets, wouldn't it be caught as kind of plagiarism? I don't think so. Because plagiarism detectors detect content written on the internet, right? ChatGPT is designed to give you non-plagiarized content. So it doesn't really plagiarize the content for you. But it, but it can be detected by AI, AI, AI content writers. So AI content, AI has a particular way of writing. They have a particular style of writing. The detection tools can understand that. And they can figure out whether it's written by AI or not. Okay. Bing, who has GPT-4, can analyze Excel data? No, it can't. Okay. Because the, that is a that is a addition which is called advanced data analysis. It's only available in the paid version of ChatGPT, not in the free version of any software so far. And no software can do that apart from ChatGPT. How can we start learning generative AI from technical perspective? Any resources? Well, YouTube is the best resource. Okay. You can join our programs. You can talk to Edforce. You know, they can organize some workshop for you if you want. Okay. Um, Mayank, I have got some, some people bypass GPT by twisting the words or requesting for access window 10 Pro the keys. Well, I mean, that must be a flaw in the Microsoft Windows. The way they generate they must be using a particular algorithm or way to generate Windows 10 Pro key, to be very honest. Okay. So that's how it is. Um, so that's how. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that covers most of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so I go, I hope this was quite fun for everybody, right? Um, so yeah, over to you. Yeah. So, um, to all the participants out there, I'm sure you have understood what it talks are. It talks are creating awareness for it. Uh, your L and D managers can get in touch with us and we can help you get the best trainings and best webinars aligned. Do leave the feedback. We will get in touch with your L and D team training team if required our upcoming ed talk for next month is on aws introduction to 
cloud and AWS by our Amazon authorized trainer, AWS authorized trainer, Amrita Vali. Thank you, Hitesh. Ladies and gentlemen, before we conclude this remarkable Ed Talk, I want to take a moment to express our heartfelt gratitude to Hitesh Modwani. Your insights have been nothing short of transformative. You have generously shared the power of AI, demystified its complexities, and equipped us with invaluable knowledge, including the keys to utilizing numerous free AI tools. Your passion, dedication, and expertise have illuminated our path to a brighter and more innovative future. Thank you, Hitesh, for an incredible session filled with wisdom and inspiration. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you to all the people over here. Um, so thank you so much for this platform and all the very best to all of you in your journey. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Please leave the Google reviews if you wish to win the Amazon voucher, instructions to follow. Apart from it, stay in tune. Bye-bye. See you next time. Recording will be available for all of you.